Hey everybody, welcome to the full button tutorial of the 2024 Toyota Camry XSE all-wheel drive. With the 2025s coming in, it's great to see some of the last of the 2024s. The XSE is definitely the sportier of the bunch. It has a lot of buttons, so we're going to go over all of them together. Let's begin. Starting with the seat, we have a forward and back motion up and down with a twist. I also have the recliner, and to the back I have a forward and back lumbar support. On the door, all four windows are one touch down, one touch up, so with a hard click and release in either direction, the window will go hands-free. However, if I do a tiny little push or pull, I can do micro adjustments to the window. In front of those buttons, I have the window lock so that passengers can't open their windows. Then I have the door lock. You'll see two little nubbies on the locking button here. That's the same as the key fob. That way you don't have to look down here. You can just feel for the two little nubs and you know that the doors are locked. In front of those, I have the wheel that toggles the left and right mirror. So if I turn the selector to the left, I can toggle the left side mirror adjustment. Here's neutral so I don't accidentally adjust anything and R for the right adjustment. On the dashboard, I have a little bit of storage underneath here. But above, I have a row of buttons starting from the left. I have the selector for the auto high beams. If I leave the lights in auto, the auto high beams will activate when they are determined by the car that they are needed. Next is the button to turn off the traction control. This will disengage the feature, but when you turn the car off and turn it back on, the traction control will return back on the car. Next, if I push and hold this, the trunk will release, so no more lever on the floor like it used to be. And next to that is the gas door, so there's a locking gas door on the driver's side. That is the release for the locking door there. And lastly on this row, my favorite button, the selector for the heated steering wheel. Speaking of the steering wheel, if I pull this lever down, I can telescope the steering wheel or raise and lower it. On the steering wheel, there are two different stocks. The first stock on the left is the turn signals with the light control. All the way down to this position is DRL off, which means daytime runner lights off. The next position is going to be the auto lights. So this is when the Camry will sense that it's daytime or nighttime and adjust the lighting accordingly. Next is parking lights, so you can have the interior buttons all light up that nice light blue, and you'll have dim lights in the front, those triple J LEDs, and your taillights will light up, but no headlights. This is manual option for the headlights in case it's raining during the day, or snowing or fog during the day, and you want those taillights to be on, even though the auto feature wouldn't detect that it's dark enough to put them on. The right stock, like on most Toyotas, operates the wipers. So I have three different selections. I have intermittent, low, and high. If I click it down once, I can change the intermittency of how often the wiper blades go. If I click it down again, it'll be a low constant, and down further, it'll be a high constant. This stock, if I pull towards me, it'll wash the front windshield and the wiper blades will wipe three times. One quick note about the auto feature again on the lighting. Upgraded from the previous version of the auto high beams, while the auto high beams are active and I'm in auto, I don't have to push the stock forward anymore to get the auto high beams. In fact, doing so will override the auto high beams and put the high beams on no matter what. So by leaving this back, the car decides when it needs the high beams, but I can instantly get high beams whenever I need them, which is a great upgrade for safety. On to the steering wheel. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have a pad that we've seen on most Toyotas with the arrows to adjust the MID, which is the helper screen in the middle here. This will go up and down through the different menus and then side to side on the pages, and the OK is the selector. On some adjustments, which we'll see in the MID section, we have to push and hold this to get to the adjusting, and then of course the back button to go back to previous pages. On the bottom here, I have the phone button so that can answer or hang up calls. And then below I have the volume adjustment for music or phone calls. Lastly, on the left side of the steering wheel, I have the voice command button. What's nice about this is, if I push it once real quick, it'll operate the Toyota audio software, but if I push and hold while connected to the USB, it'll operate Siri or Google Assistant. On the right side of the steering wheel, we have the operations for the automatic cruise control, lane departure alert, and some music. So starting with the ring, when I push this button here on the right, I'll get the little symbol here on the MID in green, and it's going to say radar ready. Then I can set the cruise control. 
I can increase the speed or decrease the speed. I can cancel the cruise control like this or press the brake. Now what's interesting is if I push and hold this button, the little symbol on the screen will remove the arrow and put the arrow on the left and the car will disappear. That's the constant cruise control, or like I like to call the old school cruise control, that's gonna be speed steady and it's not gonna be adjustable, it's not gonna sense anything, it's just gonna keep on trucking. So for the old school people that don't like the car adjusting, they wanna do it the old school way, just push and hold this and the little symbol changes and then you can set it. But when I'm in that automatic cruise control with the car symbol, once I set it, I can change the following distance right here with this button. There's several different following distances and that changes the sensitivity for that automatic cruise control for how close and sensitive the car is when it adjusts the speed. On the bottom left here, I have the turn on and off button for the lane departure alert. As you probably know, unless you're new to Toyota, the lane departure alert is very simple. It beeps when you're going out of your lane and it'll give you a little bit of steering input to get you back in that lane. Below those, I have the mode button and the seek and track. So the mode button, if you push, will go through AM, FM, Bluetooth, or Sirius. If I push and hold, it's like a secret pause or mute button. And then this just goes forward and back for the songs. The Speedo cluster is an easy reader. Two big red gauges, which is signature to the XSC, with these nice, easy to read needles. On the left-hand side, we have the RPMs showing you the engine speed. And then down below that is the engine temperature or coolant temperature if you want to be specific. I also have the light here showing that my parking brake is on. So if I put it in reverse or drive, the parking brake releases. But when I put it back in the park, within a couple seconds, the parking brake re-engages. Also, there's a little red symbol that I don't have my seatbelt on. The gauge on the right is gonna show my speed. Very easy reader here. The little green light bulb symbol means that the lights are on, which I selected manually. So if you're ever wondering, did my Camry put the lights on or did I put the lights on manually? Look for the little green light bulb and you'll know right away if those headlights and taillights are on. Below that is the gauge for the fuel. And next to the fuel pump symbol there on the right hand side, there's a little arrow showing you that the fuel door is actually on the left, just in case you forget or you've never had a Toyota before, it's right on the driver's side. Next up is the MID, the multi-information display. The MID is on every Toyota and it varies per car. On the Camry, it's very easy to read and use. So I'm on the screen that most people like. You'll notice here on the left, there's different symbols. Those are the different menus and then we can go side to side for different pages. So as we use the arrows on the steering wheel, you might see these little dots pop up on the top. That means there's different pages I can go left and right. But before, before we explore that, let's start on the top left of the screen. We have some symbols here. BSM is blind spot monitor, the little orange lights on the mirrors when somebody's in your blind spot. RCTA is rear cross traffic alert. If you are in reverse and the car senses movement, it's going to alert you. That's vehicles and people. The A symbol there with the headlight symbol is the automatic high beams turned on. Of course, like I mentioned, if I push the stock forward, it'll bypass it. And I'll get the blue symbol down here for the high beams. Then if I put the stock back, auto high beams comes back on. And it says sport in green because I selected sport mode, which we'll get to when we get to buttons by the shifter. On the top right, we have the time. On the bottom, we have a nice row. It's red right now because I'm in sport mode, but eco mode will turn it green and normal mode will go like this kind of bluish color. The bottom left, I got the outside temp. In the middle here, it shows me that I'm in park. So I don't have to look down at the shifter. Even if I go into manual mode, it'll show me what gear I'm in, which is nice. And we can use the paddle shifters on the steering wheel to operate those manual gears. And then the odometer. In the center, since we're on the most popular page, it shows the digital speed with the distance to empty. And to change your odometer and trip, there are these little buttons over here. So I can push this to go through trip A, trip B, and then I push and hold to clear it. And then this button here changes the brightness to the gauges. So this will dim the gauge brightness down and this will increase the gauge brightness. Going through the menus of the MID. So now I'm using the up and down arrows on the steering wheel to go through these different symbols. The leaf symbol, which I call the eco menu is lit up because that's the one we're on. Those are those little dots. So if I push side to side, I have three pages. So the first page shows me some information about my gas mileage. This is the eco indicator, which gives you like a, a throttle response. 
in real time to show you how economically you're driving. And then of course, everybody's favorite, the nice big digital speed. Down again, I have the driver support page. Not a whole lot going on here, but I have a mini gauge on the right there for digital. And then it's gonna show me while I'm driving what the Toyota Safety Sense is sensing, what it's doing, etc., including while I'm in the automatic cruise control. Down again is music, so I can push okay for the source. I can change the source, but this is mainly just to show what song is playing, what artist is playing while I'm driving in case the screen for the radio is taken up by the map. And then over here I have the system status slash vehicle information. So I got my tire pressure individual and it shows me which systems are on, what their names are. I can push okay to change some settings. So I can turn these on and off. See, and then they go green when they're on. I always recommend leaving everything on because these features are great. They can really help you out, you never know. Down again is the settings. So the settings menu is a little bit more involved. The first square on the left here is lit up. That's the lane departure alert. If I hold OK, I can adjust a lot of stuff. So I can turn the lane centering on and off. That'll actually try to keep the car in the center of the lane. I can change the sensitivity. The sway warning, so if it thinks that I'm swaying back and forth a lot, it'll alert me. That really does a good job sensing sleepy driving. The sensitivity of that I can also change. And then back to the top. Pushing the back button, I can go over to the pre-collision system. This is a part of Toyota Safety Sense where the car will determine that you're about to hit another car or a person. So if I hold OK, I can turn it on and off and change the sensitivity. Onto this, I have the cruise control settings. So the dynamic radar cruise control is that adaptive cruise control that we spoke about on the steering wheel. There's curve speed reduction within that now, so you can change on, off, sensitive, or low sensitive, which is nice. If you're hitting a curve really hard on cruise control, it'll actually slow you down a little bit to keep the vehicle stable. Nice upgrade to safety sense. Blind spot monitor, very simple, on and off. When you turn it back on, the bulbs will light up in the mirror so you can do a bulb check. Rear cross traffic alert, that's a simple on and off. Like I said, that's the feature where it'll sense movement when you're reversing. And then we have the rear camera detection feature, which specifically senses people and will show you a person symbol on the screen when you're in reverse. If you don't like that, you can turn that on or off. Then I have road sign assist here, holding OK. I can turn the road sign assist on and off. That's the feature where the car reads road signs and shows them on your MID. I can change the notification method. See, so for the speed limit, I can have it notify me when I'm above the speed limit. You can do visual, audio, only visual. You can make this car beep a lot, which is very interesting. And the level too. So I can set it, okay, three over, it'll alert me, or five over, it'll alert me, or one mile per hour, which is really nice. Very specific stuff here for the alerts. Here are some settings for the tire pressure warning system. So I can set the pressure, change the wheel when I rotate the tires. The rear seat reminder to check for kids and dogs. I can turn that on or off as well, which is nice. Then scheduled maintenance, I can adjust that as well. Usually the technicians will reset that when you come in for your Toyota care. Over here I have some more settings for the language, the units, the eco indicator I can turn on and off. A lot of people don't know what this is. This little eco leaf guy, he pops on and off when you're driving economically. Long story short, if you're super light on the pedal, he pops up to remind you you're doing a good job. If you're stepping on the pedal hard, he goes away to remind you that you're not really driving very economically. It does not mean you're in eco mode. Eco mode is when you push eco mode by the shifter and it says eco mode there in green. The digital speed I can turn on and off, which is interesting. The gadget content, that'll show me all the different information after the drive. I can adjust my fuel economy type here. I can turn off the MID, or I can turn it back on. Pop-up display, those are the little pop-ups when you make adjustments, you can change those and back to default settings. Now I head back over to the right again, and we're back to the beginning. If I push the down arrow again, I go from the settings menu back up to that leaf menu or the eco menu to the wonderful big digital speed. That wraps up the MID. 
Let's get to some more simple stuff and do buttons by the shifter. Buttons by the shifter. So starting over here, I have the adjustment for the heated seats for the passenger. Three different levels are off and the driver. Moving forward, we have the automatic parking brake. And like I said, when I take it out of park, it disengages on its own. And when I put it in park, within a couple seconds, it'll re-engage. Of course, I don't have to look down here because it's going to show me park the word on my tachometer up top. Then there's the brake hold feature. So while buckled up, if I push this, it'll show this in green on the uh, screen there. And then when I'm in drive and come to a stop, it'll show this in gold. And it'll let me take my foot off the brake while I'm in drive. And then I just give it a little gas to go. So that's great for city driving or the long drive through when I'm picking up some lunch or a coffee or something. Moving forward, the three different drive modes, eco, normal, and sport. I showed you earlier, it changes the color on the bottom of the MID. There's no perfect time to use any of these. You can change them while driving. You don't have to come to a stop. Simple story on these, eco mode is going to be more economical. It's gonna depower you and save the gas mileage. It's gonna calm the car down and make it super chill. Normal mode is gonna be just a blend between these two. And sport mode, my favorite, is gonna light up that screen red on the bottom and it's gonna boost your power and it's gonna give you a little more pep to your step and it's even gonna rev out the engine a little bit longer too. The actual shifter, there's a button here that I can push and go right down to drive, neutral or reverse. When I'm in reverse, I have the dynamic reverse camera here with the moving lines for when I move the wheel. I can even change the view to more of a peripheral view. It's a little distorted or basic. And then I can change the line style, which is nice, but most people like those dynamic grid lines. Once again, this is the dynamic rear view camera. Now, if I go into shift mode, I can toggle the gears forward or back like this, which I showed you on the screen there on the bottom of the MID, or I can use the paddlers plus and minus while driving. And then once I'm done with that, I can shift it right back to drive and continue driving normally. Really nice for the spirited drive. In front of the shifter, we have a couple more things going on. I have a button that turns on and off the wireless charging, which if I push on this, I have some secret storage. And right above those, there are some doors for the charging. Simple 12 volt with a USB. This USB plug is going to operate the Apple CarPlay because on the Camry, there is not a wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You have to plug it in and it initiates right away for you. On to the climate control. So like on most Toyotas, we have these two big knobs. These two knobs operate the temperature. So the first knob is going to operate the temperature for the whole car if we're synchronized or the passenger can change theirs. But once I push sync, I can operate the haul car just like this. Now to keep things pretty, we have a symmetry here. We have the front defroster and the rear defroster with the defrosting side mirrors. And you'll notice on most Toyotas, the buttons are very close to what the symbol is on the screen. So my fan speed is right next to the display on the screen, which is really easy. The air direction is right next to its symbol on the screen. Very simple to use. I can turn the system off. To resume, I just push the fan button. AC and recirculate are next to each other, which is great for the hot days. And then of course, on a Camry of this stature, we have the auto feature, which will be an automatic climate control. It's gonna adjust the fan and air direction to match what kind of climate you're looking for. Now above the climate, we have this little triangle that looks like an arrow pointing up. That's the hazards. By pushing that, that'll activate the hazards. The button does not light up for you. But speaking of up, we're gonna work our way up to the buttons above the head, and then we'll finish up with the screen. So on the Camry XSC, we have the auto dimming rear view mirror with these buttons here that look like houses for the home link. So we can set that up to open up the garage automatically. And the little green light means that my auto dimming feature is active, but there's a power button to turn off the auto dimming feature if I choose to. Above my head even further, we have the lever here that blocks the button for the safety connect, which comes standard for 10 years or until the 4G network goes away. If I push the button on the speakers, it'll ask if I have an emergency. If I get into an accident, it'll send help, especially if the airbags go off. They'll know your geolocation. 
you'll want to accept that when you buy the car and get the Toyota app. Individual LED lights here, or I have what I call the sun button that lights up the whole car front and back. And then I have the button that lights up the interior lights when I open the door. This little guy here is the pilot light. So we have a nice little blue pilot light that shines light all the way down here. And speaking of blue light, you'll notice on the XSC, we have some beautiful ambient light on the dash and some other places. So you'll really enjoy that at nighttime. And then of course, a glasses holder. This is a nice deep one too with a soft interior. There's a slide out here for the sun visors for when the sun gets in that awkward place. No light for the passenger. No light for the driver. That wraps up overhead features. Now we're gonna wrap the whole video up with the screen. So keeping things super simple, the Toyota software on the 24 Camry 18 through 24 is the, what we now call previous software system, preferred by some people, outdated to others. I personally like it because it's very easy to operate. And you're gonna have these two big knobs one for the power and volume, one for the tune and scroll for the radio. And then we have those traditional four buttons on each side. We have the home screen, which will split up some different information for us, which we can adjust. Menu, which is where we can get to these different settings. Audio, which will turn on the radio, Sirius, everything like that. Then we have map, which this one doesn't have the integrated navigation because it doesn't have the driver assist package. But when you're plugged into Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you'll have that connected right there. Seek and track for the music, which is also on the steering wheel, phone connection, and apps. Now, for the home screen, like I said, you can adjust this stuff when you're plugged into CarPlay or Android Auto. It's going to have a little widget right over here. Menu, keeping things simple. Some of these are redundant, so these are already buttons that we pushed. Uh, for info, we can see some economy, vehicle alerts if something's wrong with the car. Our fuel economy is on here. I'm assuming if you're driving an XSE all-wheel drive, you're not too concerned with your economy, but the hybrid Camry people are gonna be very interested in that. Setup is where you wanna go. So there's a lot of stuff here that you're probably never gonna to touch, so I'm gonna keep it super simple. On the left, I can train the car to recognize my voice with the voice training recognition, but I suspect you'll be connected to a car player Android Auto, and you're gonna be using that assistant or Siri anyway, so you might not even worry about this. Down here, Vehicle settings, there's a couple things you might want to do. If I go to vehicle customization, I can change the door locks. Now, all Toyotas are going to unlock the doors when you put it in park and lock them when you shift them out of park. If you have more security in mind and you want that vehicle to stay locked when you park it, you can turn off the automatic unlock right there. A couple other things you might like. I can change the lock operations for the key fob. I can change if it opens the driver's door or all the doors, they auto relock. But what I like are these bottom two. When you unlock or lock the car, it blinks. You can turn that off right here if you want to, and you can change how loud the beep is when you lock and unlock it. Really nice. For climate settings, not a whole lot. You can just turn on and off the auto AC mode. But for light settings, there's a couple cool things. You can change the auto headlight sensitivity, how long they stay on when you shut the car off, so you can see where you're walking. The daytime running lights when you're in auto mode, I suggest you leave those on. But this one is nice. If you need a little more time for those interior lights when you shut the car off, you can extend those. Now below that we have valet mode where you can pretty much lock up the screen. And over here you can set up your Wi-Fi. But really in the menu, that's pretty much everything you're doing in setup. There's a couple other things on the right side. This is where you would change your time, your language. This is where we can customize the home screen, like I mentioned. You can change the layout. There's a couple of bits of information. It's not super complex. I also like that you can change the color theme. So if you're not driving an XSC, say you got the XLE and you want it to be more classy. Say you have some old eyes and you want this to be a little brighter. You can fix that. But we gotta go with the reds for the XSC, especially since it's a red XSC to match those beautiful red gauges. You can turn the beep on and off. I did that in my Tacoma. The beep does get annoying sometimes. And here are some advanced settings here for the keyboard and stuff like that. Down here, we can check for software updates, but you're not gonna spend a lot of time here. So I'm not gonna spend a 15 minute segment going over all of this stuff. Pro tip though about the audio. 
If you're running CarPlay or Android Auto, you can adjust the equalizer from the phone. If you're doing AM or FM, you can go to sound and you can adjust your equalizer here. That's a good EQ for most of the radio. Bluetooth, I recommend this style EQ. Turn the treble up and the bass a little bit and it'll sound really nice. If you got the JBL sound system, you can even bump up that bass more for the subwoofer. On display, this is pretty much the last part of the screen you're gonna really go to. And this is why, because apps, this is a redundant feature for the Entune Audio, which we're not really using anymore with CarPlay and Android Auto, and projection is just gonna be your CarPlay. So for display, I can turn the screen off and still listen to music, which is great. I can just push any button to turn the screen back on. And another th thing for display is, the general, I can set the brightness if I wanna turn down the brightness a little bit. I showed you how to change the brightness to the gauges with the little button down here in the corner. But it's nice to be able to adjust the brightness on the screen as well. Say you have a headache, you can just go ahead and turn that screen off, which is nice. Very simple, very easy. And that wraps up the full button tutorial on the 2024 Toyota Camry XSE all-wheel drive. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you. This Camry is very similar to other Camrys that you've seen. If you have the driver assist package, you would have the heads up display over here showing the reflections. There would be a panoramic roof available too with some other stuff, but this is a good run of the mill XSE. If you liked it, please give it a like, share it with somebody that might find it useful, and please consider subscribing for more Toyota content. I promise it'll be worth it. This is an educational channel with tutorials and reviews. With that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.